Bernadette was last seen leaving Shaw's Jewelry Store in the East Point Mall in northeastern Baltimore County, Maryland on September 27, 1986. Caruso had completed her work shift at the jewelry store and was seen entering her car in the mall's parking lot at approximately 5.05 p.m. that day. She had told a co-worker that her estranged husband, Michael Caruso, had called her and she was going to meet him to discuss something. Bernadette has never been heard from again. She was supposed to call a friend later that day, but never did. The vehicle she was driving, her grandmother's gray-green 1982 Chevrolet Cavalier with Maryland license tags numbered FYW-097, has never been recovered. Bernadette was separated from Michael, a Baltimore County police officer, at the time of her disappearance. They were involved in a bitter custody battle over their three-year-old daughter. Their daughter was spending the weekend with relatives on the day Bernadette vanished. Michael was later fired from the police department after being convicted of abusing a prisoner. Witnesses report that he often threatened his wife. He has not been charged in her case, however, nor has he or anyone else been named as a suspect. Foul play is suspected in Bernadette's disappearance due to the circumstances involved. Her loved ones describe her disappearance as uncharacteristic of her and they believe she came to harm. Bernadette resided in the 4000 block of Rustico Road in Carrollwood, Maryland, in 1986. Her case remains unsolved. It is just unbearable, knowing the selfish, misogynist person that did this to my daughter is out there and could do this to some other poor woman, Brenda Ruffin laments about the murder of her beloved daughter Marilyn Jazz Scott. The murder shocked not only local law enforcement but her quiet community in Bel Air, Maryland, due to way the young mother-to-be was targeted. There was only one reason they came there and that was to kill Marilyn Scott, Detective David Skika of the Harford County Sheriff's Department asserted during a press conference with Mar News. Marilyn's body was found lying next to her car, keys still in hand, on that crisp February morning in 2017 suggesting she was following her normal routine when she was ambushed. The crime scene revealed that she was heading down to start her car for her 50-minute commute to Newcastle's Air National Guard offices when shots rang out, alerting neighbors to the tragedy. Marilyn was shot twice in the chest and once in the head. Marilyn Scott was only 28 years old. She was also three months pregnant. Both she and the unborn child died. Marilyn loved seeing other people happy, her mother said. She would always reserve restaurants for birthdays and holidays. She never forgot an event. Marilyn loved to buy presents for her family and friends, and always spent more on others than she did on herself. To her family, Marilyn was extraordinary and had a radiant personality, smart and driven to accomplish. She was incredibly independent. She never needed anyone else's help, her sister, Paris Scott, remembers proudly. Marilyn ran track in high school and college, excelling in the 100-meter, 200-meter, 300-meter, long jump, and hurdles. Through scholarships alone, she paid her way through college at Coppin State University in Baltimore, where she earned her bachelor's degree in English. She later enlisted in the Air National Guard, where she worked her way up to the rank of Staff Sergeant, with her sights set on becoming an officer. The admiration in Paris's voice is profound as she lists her older sister's many remarkable achievements. Marilyn is the driving motivation for Paris in self-educating on the justice system, specifically what to expect once a suspect is brought to accountability. Paris shared her mission with Project, cold case to advocate for her sister and take the lead in understanding and explaining judicial process to her family as her way of coping. While there have been speculations as to who was responsible for taking Marilyn's life, the police maintain that there is not enough evidence to prosecute. Although there was a reported break-in at her residence just days prior to her murder, nothing was taken. Marilyn called the police for that incident, 
but for her loved ones, sinister signs were ignored. Brenda Ruffin believes the suspect in her daughter's murder is not behind bars. She worries that the longer they aren't held accountable, there could be more opportunities to do more terrible things. Michelle was last seen at her home on Clark Boulevard in Hallithorpe, Maryland at 9.30 a.m. on July 20, 2002. She was going to drive her dark green 1998 Dodge Caravan to buy some items for her three-year-old son's birthday party at local stores. Michelle never returned home. Her car was found abandoned at 11 a.m. that same day, parked in front of a row of houses on Zion Avenue near the corner of Clyde Avenue and an entrance to Hillcrest Park, in the nearby residential community of Lansdowne. The entry key was broken off in the driver's door keyhole, and the rest of the keychain was missing. There was no sign of Michelle at the scene. A photograph of her vehicle is posted with this case summary. Authorities initially thought Michelle had disappeared while shopping for the party, but now they think she may have never voluntarily left her house that day. Her parents think she is dead and believe she was abducted before reaching the end of the street, and possibly before leaving her residence. Her husband, Dwight D. J. Rust, says he saw her car rounding a bend in the street the day she disappeared, but no one saw Michelle leave and even Dwight did not actually see his wife inside her car. Michelle took none of her personal belongings when she vanished, and there has been no activity on her bank accounts since her disappearance. Her credit cards disappeared with her, but have not been used since she vanished. She was missed about an hour after she was last seen, when Dwight became concerned because she had not returned from the store and no one reported having seen her since she left. Michelle had purple polish on her nails at the time of her disappearance, and may have been carrying a black backpack containing her insulin kit. She is a graduate of Lansdowne High School and has always lived in the Hallithorpe area. She had worked at a children's daycare facility before becoming a stay-at-home mother. Her family says it is extremely uncharacteristic of her to leave without warning. Authorities have not ruled Dwight out as a suspect, but they have not ruled anyone else out either, except Michelle's parents. Dwight was the last person to see his wife before she vanished. He had reportedly had several extramarital affairs and Michelle was afraid that one of his girlfriends might hurt her. Dwight, who began dating Michelle when she was a freshman in high school and married her in 1997, maintains his innocence in his wife's disappearance and states he does not believe she left of her own free will. He filed for divorce from Michelle in 2007 and sought custody of their son. Michelle remains missing and her case is unsolved. Her disappearance is being investigated as a kidnapping by the FBI and foul play is suspected. Some agencies state Michelle disappeared from Baltimore, Maryland, 